They call it the Lenovo Lock, Lenovo's newest budget-friendly gaming laptop that's currently on sale at Lenovo.com right now for $809. Now that's the model equipped with eight gigs. You can actually get the 16 gig version for $899. And I have the 16 gig version before me. Now it comes with the Ryzen 7 7840HS, as well as the RTX 4050, but you can upgrade it to the 4060 if you would like. Links in the description below if you wanna check the live pricing or you're considering making a purchase. Now in this video, we're gonna dive into the usability, build quality, and performance of this laptop to see if it's the right choice for you. Now, first and foremost, looking at the build quality, this is definitely their budget friendly build, but they don't skimp on the build assembly. They use good materials. We have a plastic top cover, bottom cover, as well as keyboard deck, but I like the bottom cover material they chose. A lot of times on these most affordable gaming laptops, they have a cheap, very chintzy plastic. It's very clunky and just seems just brittle. This one is not that. It has a very nice plastic, it's a matte finish, and we have a large vent that opens up the entire area. You can see here, you can see through the fans and the heat pipe for the Lenovo lock. Now the assembly is done well. You can see the bottom cover fits into the side panel very nicely, no catchy edges. And actually, if you wanna take apart this laptop, you have to pull off this back fin, undo these screws under here, and then pull off all these screws and it comes off. But that gives you access to the RAM as well as the M.2 drives. You can upgrade both RAM sticks and there is one occupied and one unoccupied M.2 drives for this laptop. So there's a lot of upgrade availability for this budget-friendly device. So if you buy it with eight gigs, you can go ahead and upgrade it to 16 or 32 later post-purchase, no problem at all. Now, another thing I really like about the laptop is all these little blue accents that they've put into the device. And even on the interior of the laptop, you can see I'm showing you the upgrade path footage and you can see the blue heat pipes. I think it's so cool, the little attention to details they've put into even their budget-friendly lineup. Now, you can see the speakers are here along the bottom of the laptop. This is one area that is definitely budget-friendly, not the best audio experience, but here's a sample so you can hear for yourself. Another area that is definitely budget friendly is going to be the battery. They gave us a 60 watt hour battery, resulting in only five hours and 19 minutes of battery life. Now remember that's at 20% screen brightness on battery saver mode with the Lenovo Vantage Center set to the most quiet mode. I was disappointed, just to be totally honest. The Lenovo laptops in the past, like the Pro 5i or the Slim 5, have gotten upwards of seven to eight hours of battery life. And with that 60 watt hour battery, it just doesn't pack the punch of battery life that I was hoping for. Now, looking at the form factor of this laptop, it's actually fairly thin for a budget-friendly gaming laptop. Usually budget-friendly laptops are quite a bit thicker. This one is 0.87 inches thick and weighs 5.29 pounds. It isn't super light, but I would say it is fairly thin for the category it fits into. Now going ahead and taking a look at the ports on the Lenovo lock, we have a USB type C and a headphone jack along the left side panel. Along the back side, we have two USB type A's, a network port, HDMI, and our power adapter. And on the right side panel, we have a USB type A and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam. Now, speaking of the webcam, that is found along the top bezel of the laptop. And here's an example so you can see what it looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Lenovo lock and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now let's go ahead and see if we can open and close this laptop with one hand and it does so easily, uh, but let's see how wobbly the screen is. Not too wobbly. So if you're in a car or on a bus or on a train or on an airplane traveling, you shouldn't have an experience with too much screen wobble, but it definitely has a little bit. Let's check the screen flex. Pretty flexy screen. This is a plastic top cover, so not super rigid, but nothing to be concerned about. And I really like how the hinges take the screen down to more than 45 degrees. Um, it's not quite flat, but you do get a little bit more viewing angle options with this hinge compared to some other laptops. Okay, now taking a look at the interior of the laptop, we have a very traditional Lenovo Legion keyboard here. We have the numpad on the right side, full-size shift keys, full-size arrow keys, Nice quiet keyboard with a medium key travel. So it's very standard of Lenovo's gaming laptops. Now the trackpad is again, standard size, mounted well to the keyboard deck. Nice quiet click, but not a very soft dampen click. You still have a bit of that click noise. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear what it sounds like.
Inside the Lenovo Vantage Center, even though this is their budget-friendly option, we do have control over the thermal performance, whether it be performance mode, bounce mode, quiet mode, or even customize your own. And if we go ahead to the GPU working mode, we even have a selection for hybrid iGPU only, hybrid auto mode, or even dedicated to GPU. So it does have a MUX switch to go ahead and turn that on. So a lot of options here, even though we have the budget-friendly lock before us. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the performance benchmarks. And just as a reminder, this is the Ryzen 7 7840HS. I've put 16 gigs of RAM in this laptop for the test benchmarks, and we do have the RTX 4050 with one terabyte SSD. And this laptop does have good performance. You can see in Geekbench single core and multi-core, as well as Cinebench R23 and Cinebench 2024, that it falls in line with most of the latest Ryzen processors. However, Intel is going to have better single core and multi-core out of this year's processor. So this is a good budget-friendly option. It is not going to be the highest performer. We're seeing better performance out of Intel as a whole, uh, but this is still having good performance. And you'll see in the real world benchmarks how that all plays out. Going ahead and taking a look at Blender Classroom. Because this is an RTX 4050, this would not be my top recommendation for Blender. You're seeing we're scoring about a 736, which is a good score. But for me with Blender, I wanna see above an 800 and even into the 900 and thousands in order to be like, okay, this is going to give you no issues. You're gonna have smooth workflow and it's gonna be a good fit. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now looking at 3D modeling for an RTX 4050, this is impressive. It definitely optimizes those components well. It's not a big top of the chart laptop. It's not gonna blow away other laptops that are you know two to three times its price. This is a budget friendly laptop, so that has to be kept in mind. Um, but it does have good performance with the components that it has, especially that it's an RTX 4050. Normally, I don't recommend RTX 4050s for 3D modeling, but this one is seeming to make the cut. Now, going ahead and looking at SolidWorks, now we looked at Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, but looking at SolidWorks, scores a 104. Very, very respectable for a RTX 4050. In my opinion, this is one of the best bang for buck, budget-friendly RTX 4050 laptops that shows great performance for 3D modeling that, that you can find. It's really a great contender. Now looking inside of Photoshop, we have a 917. Because of the 16 gigs of RAM, we're getting a great score inside of Photoshop. You're gonna have no issues there. If you go ahead and get the eight gig model, you're gonna have lower performance inside of Photoshop because Photoshop and After Effects really like RAM. You can see in After Effects that RTX 4050 is making us struggle a little bit in After Effects with the 752. I like to see in the eight to 900s for After Effects to say, yes, great performance rock on laptop. Also, like I said, After Effects loves RAM. So an upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM for any laptop would be helpful for smooth workflows inside of After Effects. If it were me and I wanted a really strong After Effects laptop, I would definitely go with an RTX 4060. Even more so, I would go with an RTX 4070. That's how I'd prioritize it, even over the processor being better performance. So if it were me, I would choose better GPU over a better processor inside of After Effects. Now going ahead and looking at video editing, you can see the 4K export times coming up on the screen. Got a three minute and 14 second export time. Great result. I definitely don't have any complaints with that. Um, you're in that nice median range, you know, anywhere from about three minutes and 30 seconds, all the way down to really, really good crazy export times of like two minutes and six seconds. So you're in a great spot there with 4K export times. Now what's just as good is we're seeing really great export times out of B-RAW, 16 minutes and seven seconds. That is fantastic, especially at this price point and especially being an RTX 4050, such a well-optimized laptop. Now things get even more interesting when you look at 6K B-RAW playback, only 144 drop frames. For an RTX 4050, that's amazing. Now if you're gonna do red footage, 3,263 drop frames, I don't think that that is necessarily amazing. However, I will say that just two years ago, laptops in the $1,600 to $2,500 price point were dropping 6,000 to 8,000 frames. So being that this laptop is about $899, dropping less frames, I see some great improvements in laptops for higher resolution footage for video editing. So great news uh, for the industry as a whole. For DaVinci Resolve, 4K export, five minutes and 42 seconds, solid export time, no complaints there. If you're looking for a laptop at an excellent price point with great performance, great upgrade path, and solid build quality, again, not the best, it is a budget-friendly build using budget-friendly materials, 
But, I mean, this thing is an incredible bang for buck. You get amazing performance out of the RTX 4050. The only downside is the efficiency. I didn't love that it gave us a 60 watt hour battery, which then resulted in lower battery life. That was definitely a disappointment, but the performance was not disappointing on this laptop. I can't imagine what this thing would be like if you put even just an RTX 4060 in it. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.